Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. We're on Alpha 11 today, which means new design options, new hull formats, and new ways to come up with all sorts of crazy designs. Today's scenario was submitted by Donovan, one of my naval architects. More on what a naval architect is and how you can become one down below in the description. The scenario is pretty straightforward. The year is 1949 and Russia is expanding quickly. Stalin has set a... has... Sorry, Stalin has set his sights on conquering the world, but his allies from World War II stand in his way. With the United States, United Kingdom and France and what remains of Germany and the Japanese Navy, which is now controlled by the US, Stalin has developed a plan to make world domination a reality. Stalin quietly orders a new battleship to take on his enemies, starting with the UK first. So we're going to take out the United Kingdom, and I really wonder to see if the enemy AI is going to be using the new battleship hulls that the British have. That means no more N3G3 hulls, but something quite a bit bigger, potentially. And I'm going to be building a battleship. Uh, fortunately, I have no restrictions. And that means I can, <laughs> I can really go to town on how exactly I want to design this thing. Now, um... I'd say the USSR is not particularly known for being shy, so we're going to go with a 69,000 ton battleship, which is arguably smaller than what the British could potentially send my way. Of course, you never quite know what the AI throws up, but, well, I would be surprised if we're going to see a fairly large battleship that comes my way. I'd also say that the Russians could be brawlers, but whether that is safe and or doable with a 69,000 ton battleship, eh, I think it's tricky to do that. Now, I'm thinking if I move the tower all the way forward, I could have a battleship that has a lot of guns in the middle. But of course, when you do that, you're very much obstructed by your main tower and or your secondary tower. It would just... <laughs> <laughs> I could put all the guns on there. Okay, I gotta test this. I just want to see uh, what sort of caliber. Recently, I've been using the 18s. I've been using the 20s. Considering the threat level of two battleships and a battle cruiser. I'm oh, sorry, two battleships and two battle cruisers. I would need something sizable, fairly punchy. A quad 16? No, it doesn't want to fit. More importantly, actually. Oh, no, it won't work. I was very much hoping to put barbettes on here, and that way have super-firing turrets, but you cannot do that. So I guess we're going to have to go with a more traditional build to make sure that everything is going to fit. So let's go with a enlarged barbette. I'm afraid it's going to be a pretty dull build this way, and just an ABXY. The reasoning is that otherwise I might not have a ship which is, well, let's say which is capable enough of taking down the enemy. Um, let's see, we got the Mark 3s and the 16. I could go for a mismatched type of gun system, so something like that. It's just that there's not really any advantage. In fact, there's a disadvantage, because now these guns, these turrets, are not drinking from the same pool, as it were. Their magazines are split, because this one takes from a separate magazine that only works for quad turrets. The other one... You know what? Screw it. We're going to go with a 16 quad, and then an 18 triple. Because why not? Whoops. Uh, 16 quad center line. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. Considering that I still have 15,000 tons left. And sure enough, I still need to add a funnel, but that really shouldn't cause that many issues. Induced boilers are even enough. Wow. Let's go with some barbettes. A bit of anti-torp. That's still almost 8,000 tons. Oh. <laughs> right, about that. I forgot half the systems on the ship. And now the ship is looking a whole lot different. Crap. Now, if I want to make this thing a brawler, 
I would need to sacrifice somewhere. I would need to sacrifice in firepower. I would need to sacrifice in speed. But then again, you need your speed in order to get close. So I think that this is not quite going to be a brawler. More importantly, the ship will need some sort of secondary armament to ensure that it can still defend itself against smaller ships. Now, sure enough, they don't have too many of those. Um, they have five destroyers and one heavy cruiser. So it's mostly capital ships that I need to take out. Yes, I consider battle cruisers, or <laughs> as somebody put it in the comments recently, cattle bruisers. Uh, I don't consider cattle bruisers... No, I do consider cattle bruisers to be... Um, capital ships, but heavy cruisers, less so. Anyway, considering you're facing destroyers, let's go with uh, a couple of 5-inch duels. And um, I think that I'm going to have to be relying on my secondary ships, if you will, to ensure that the smaller pesky destroyers keep at a reasonable distance. I really like the feature that was introduced in this patch, which makes sure that the guns are always pointing back and forth. Instead of having all these secondaries just pointing out sideways. It just makes it a hell of a lot easier. Now then, um, the segment that I always happen to come up to last, armor. I can shoot out to 27 and 33. So I have no shortage of range. At 27 we're looking at plunging fire. So arguably armor up the deck. But considering that I would need 18 inches of deck pen to deal with the 16 inch shells and 25 inches of deck to deal with the well, plunging fire of 18 inch guns, I don't think that that is going to be possible. I can go for a bit less, but it won't be stellar. Maybe armor. No, I cannot armor up the turrets anymore. 15 inch is as good as it's going to get. A bit on the secondaries, I guess. Because I don't have that many of them anyway. And I kind of need those to keep the DDs at bay. No, oh, we're already over. Um, there. Oop. Let's not remove that. There we go. Right, this is the Nodava. She's going to have to prove her might against the British. And I really wonder what the British have built. Now, once again, the lineup. My battleship and two cattle bruisers versus their battleship and another two cattle bruisers. I have two light cruisers arming up against one heavy. And they have... Uh, sorry, I have five destroyers and they have one. They're supposed to have five. I mismatched this. Huh. Well, you know what? I don't actually mind that much. Considering that the AI is still not really that good at managing their destroyers. So this should be five. But, I, well, my mistake. I went with one. Okay, what do we have? We have battle cruisers for assist. And what are these guys looking like? 13-inch guns. Not great. A turning circle of almost a kilometer. We have sonar three, so at least any torpedoes we'll see coming. But... Better be sure not to get hit by any torpedoes because you'll flood to death very, very quickly. Do we have any underwater weapon systems? No. Well, torpedoes. By underwater weapon systems, I mean that sometimes I've seen the game create ships which have ships or which have guns that are underwater. Uh, yes, it's as ridiculous as it sounds and it really shouldn't be happening, but it is. Now I'm going to set the battle cruisers to follow the battleship. Light cruisers Varyag and Lieutenant Darimov. Standard bulkheads, 32 knots, decent turning circle, torpedo launchers ranging 21.7. Complement of a high amount of torpedoes, less so of the shells. Okay, 7 inch guns, 3 inch guns, and 2 inch. Destroyers Kreshet, Burnyi, Kapitan Juros. What? Jurasovsky, Vinolivsky. No, Vino Livyi and Donskoy Kazak. These guys also come with very long-range torpedoes. They are 23-inch. They are minus 35% visibility. Not necessarily great, but I think I can make it work. 
Now I want you to join that div. Hold on. Uh, just you there. I'm going to set to normal formation to test a theory that somebody posted in the comment section that said, you know what? I think it's loose formation that's causing the issues. Where the devs said that the issue that was ships not moving has been fixed. Whether that's actually true uh, remains to be seen. Because I have already seen in the, the one battle that I did that some ships did not move as well as I was hoping they would. Okay, this is their battleship. Nine 14 inch guns. And this is their battle cruiser with nine 16 inch guns. Yikes. Target the battleships first. Primarily because they're generally easier to hit. Narva, turn a bit to starboard as you are. Destroyers, get ready to push in. The enemy formation is moving somewhat towards me. DD's new plan, that way. Light cruisers, normal formation. I want you guys to follow with the battle cruisers. That way I don't have to micro them. And if any destroyers come in closer, I can always send those guys in to engage. Accuracy, not great. Less than 3%. Not great at all. Okay, one, two, three, four, five destroyers. Excellent. What the fuck? Well, that's one of their battleships gone. That was inside the first five minutes? Holy shit, you got unlucky. What the hell? Two hits. And the one hit, I think. Yeah, it was this hit. 18 inch gun hits the stern deck extended over pen. Right into the magazine. Cooking off all the ammunition of those, I think it was 13 inch guns. And just inflicting massive amounts of damage. And now we have done the same to, I think, a heavy cruiser. Holy... Russians are not to be messed with. This is not necessarily just a trade for the Russians, by the way, but holy damn, that did a lot of damage. I'm not quite sure how these guys are maneuvering. <laughs> what the... That was another 18-inch hit. That's their heavy cruiser gone. Okay, DDs, we're gonna close in. I know it's not really required, but the closer you get, the better your torpedo solution can become. Because the longer the torpedoes travel, the bigger the margin of error. We've already done 4.8k damage and they've done nothing? What? The British have exactly the same tech as I do. They are just getting really unlucky. Or they're targeting the wrong ships. But whichever it is, they're getting hammered. This is really not how I expected this scenario to go down. Because I thought, you know what? I have a battleship, but you guys have two. I have two battle cruisers, but considering they're. Well. They're. Their reasonable lack of survivability, as they only have minimum bulkheads. I wasn't really expecting to be able to kill stuff this quick. But the Narva is making very short work of the British. Okay, they finally intercepted... No, in inflicted some damage. I think that was the hit DD hit. On the Burnie. Burnie. Sorry, not Burnie. I'm torpedoing one of their ships. Look at this guy. He was hit once. And I think that they have... Well, they're not really using that many bulkheads, but their anti-flooding system is good, because they're getting rid of it very quickly. This one too? What? Torpedo launch from two destroyers. Excellent. Weapons off. Uh, 
Identification on the Rodney complete. Minimum bulkheads as expected. How good's the accuracy on these? Not great. 3.2. Chance to pen? 72%. Chance to pen from the Narva? 84%. <sighs> the British are turning tail. Narva's doing about 20... Yeah, Narva's doing full speed. And the other guys... You guys can speed up a little, actually. Or not. Okay, fine. I believe that this is the target that is set for the torpedoes, and it seems to know that they're here. So their anti-torpedo system... Yeah, sonar 2. But don't turn that way then, Rodney. Hold on. That is not what a 1200 meter turning circle looks like. This guy is definitely not doing full speed anymore. I mean, he shouldn't be, with the amount of water that he's taken on. But that thing was zigzagging real quick. Ah, Battleship Centurion. Standard bulkheads. 38,000 tons? Here. They got the same tech I do. Generation 2 radar. Stereoscopic 5 rangefinder. Game, geared Steam Turbines 2, Shaft 2, Auxiliary 3. But they went with Krupp 2 armor. Yeah, if you're going to start making really weird design decisions like that, then there's no helping you. If you're going to make design mistakes like that, you're going to get punished for it. As indicated. They've still only inflicted one hit? What the hell? I'm looking for a fair fight here, but this is just a butchery. How is this happening? For, take the Rodney, for example. Stereoscopic 4 rangefinder. Generation 2 radar. Group 3. It's not great. It's definitely not going to help you survive. Standard shells, high TNT explosives, advanced hydraulics. Their reload's a bit less than mine. But these are punchy 16-inch guns. If you fire that at my battleship, I guarantee you that you will do damage. If you fire that at battle crew, it's going to be worse. 75% chance to pen. But if they keep zigzagging as much as they are, then their guns cannot usually be brought to bear. And because of that, I think, they're having such a hard time inflicting damage. There we go. Another fire. What about New Zealand? Some rudder damage. A little bit of buoyancy problems, but nothing too severe. Okay. Torpedo when ready. I believe all DDs have the torpedoes loaded. They're just not pointed at the target, I think. Torpedoes away. Hold off. I shouldn't be heading at an angle towards the target, because then the DDs definitely can't launch. Also, these guys are running away at a speed of oh, 25 knots. It's not that bad. I was worried there for a sec that they wouldn't be able to keep up. But you know what? I might be able to torp the battleship out. Sonar. Hydro 3. They're going to have more of a problem detecting the torpedoes and thus avoiding them. And yes, they have a destroyer out here somewhere. But I'm not overly impressed by its performance so far. Look at this guy. Finally, I actually take a flooding hit on the battleship, but I've lost 3%. And the battle cruisers haven't taken a scratch whatsoever. What? I don't I really don't get this. The AI should be putting up a lot more of a fight than this. Immediately the guns switch over and Pretty accurately fire at the New Zealand. 
or just happen to get lucky. I'm not sure which exactly it is. At any rate, we're going to have to start pointing directly at the target. Because the target is running away. Still, this is not... Sure, it has 18-inch guns and 16-inch guns. But aside from that, it is not that... Not that special of a build. I guess it just happens to work really, really well. Whereas, arguably, it shouldn't. There's the New Zealand. Where's your battleship at? Because the battleship can see me. Here. Right here. 13 clicks out. How am I... Ooh. Okay. Incoming torpedoes. How do my destroyers not see them? Because it is a battleship. It's not something that you hide very easily. And sure enough, it's only... Eight, well only. It's 38,000 tons, so yes, it's not the biggest ship. But still. I need to do a bit of an evasive maneuver here. Now, of course, the uh, Capitan Juros, Juro, Jura, Jurasovsky is going to have to head all the way to the back. Ah, there you are. Centurion. Smoke up, target Centurion, head hard to starboard, and prepare to torpedo the target. Battle cruisers and light cruisers now lined up. Not exactly what I was planning on. Let's set formation loose and increase everybody to flank speed. 5.9k damage done, 5.1k came out of the Narva. And she's a relatively small ship. I think at 69,000 tons, she is one of the smallest battleships that I could build. Because give me not, well, give me not any other nation, but quite a few of the other nations. And you're looking at 80, 90, sometimes 130,000 tons of ship. So it could have been way, way, way worse if I'd had the Narva... Or let's say a design from the Russian or from the, the Japanese. Second DD launched. I'm just hoping to slow the target down and keep it oh spotted. Because as it happens, I cannot target something that I cannot see. Which would be a neat feature by the game. Ho hold on. Oh you're tarping the battle cruiser now. And so are you. Not sure I'm a fan, because I was working on that battleship. Now, I've had people comment on videos in the past saying, Yeah, well, are you surprised that you won this? You built an overpowered battleship. I wouldn't call this thing overpowered. Yes, it performs. It does well. I wouldn't call it overpowered. It's not some sort of, let's go with 15, 20 inch guns or something silly like that. That is not what I'm building. I couldn't, even if I wanted to, because it wouldn't fit on that hull. The Brits had the numbers, but just didn't use them. New Zealand seems to be outrunning the torpedo launch. I think that what happened was the New Zealand had more water on her. Pumped it out, sped up, and one, two, three waves of torpedoes are just utterly missing their mark. The forced turn, however, does mean that my battleship has a better chance of catching up. Although I can only do 26 knots, which happens to be 13 knots slower than their battle cruiser. Hold on, if you're going to keep turning that way, you might still get hit. By the third wave. No way. Are you, you... What? No. Yes. You idiot. Trust me, they knew those things were there. <laughs> they knew those things were there. They just didn't care. The AI didn't course correct. Okay. Fair play. If that's your choice. Ah, you must be the only destroyer that they have. Allow myself 
to send my destroyers over. And let's bring out the guns to take out the New Zealand. She has some engine problems. I'm not sure if that was inflicted by my guns or by the torpedoes. Potentially a bit of both. I'm sorry that this is not the most entertaining fight, because it looked like a nice, relatively small bit of combat. But it's just a straight-up butchery. The British have three ships left. That's all. They got their destroyer, which hasn't made its mark on the battle at all. They have their one heavily damaged battlecruiser, and they have the battleship Centurion. But that's it. And they're not even firing anymore. Because they ran a little low on ammo. The 14-inch guns, in their curious wisdom, have decided that the destroyer is the biggest threat. The destroyer that's 17 clicks away that you are exceptionally unlikely to hit. Instead of the battleship that's barreling down at you at 12 kilometers. Which you could definitely hit with a 14-inch gun. Let alone 12 of them. Uh, sorry, 9 of them. Ah, the RNG is real with this one. Um, oh. Is it that time again? It is that time again. Detach, speed your ass up, and head towards the battle. A spe... Hello? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Comrade, you better not be abandoning the party. You're going to be sorry when you do. And if not you, then your family. Secondary guns on the rocket. Can the rocket do any damage? Yes, she can. The real question is, will she? Where are your torpedo launchers, Rocket? On the stern. They're loaded, but the torpedo launchers aren't even aimed at the battleship. There's all sorts of weird shit going on here. Narva's taking a bit of damage. Oh, whoa, we're even firing... Yeah, okay, we're firing the 16-inch guns at the DD. Uh, everything there, except for the 5-inch guns. Because it's more interesting to take out the battlecruiser now. She's weak. We can take her out. Something's up with the AI. I'm not sure what... Rudder damaged. I'm six kilometers away. Unless they have some problem trying to get the torpedo launcher to aim my way. Which I wouldn't see how, because there's no gun behind it. Sometimes the AI really boxes in their torpedo launcher between a gun here and a gun there. They didn't do that today. So I think that it should be entirely possible for them to, well, throw those torpedoes my way. There goes the New Zealand. 21% chance to hit the battleship. Centurion. I have to say, though, the British got really unlucky. The way that that ship detonated, they're firing Cordite, which is not that volatile. They have Barbette 2. That could be better. Reinforced Bulkheads 1 could be better. Standard shells, reduced complement of those. Electrical turrets, I think those are slightly more prone to exploding. But that's really the only culprit that I can see. Yeah, and of course Crook too, that's just a general lack of armor. Come to port. Aim the guns at the Centurion and take her out of commission. Centurion's not a bad ship. She's just not controlled properly. 
seven inch guns, seven inch guns to, well, to augment the case made guns, which really don't have that much visual. Five inch guns, two inch guns. It's not a bad ship. So in this case, I don't blame the ship, I blame the skipper. I blame the Admiral for not commanding their forces properly. Where's my destroyer group? Up there, okay. We've got a very brave light cruiser coming in here. Launching torpedoes at the last surviving ships. Notably the battleship. I just don't think that unless the battleship turns, that those are going to be much of an issue. Kaluga. That way. Something happened to the battle cruisers when I accidentally dropped the division from the light cruisers in the one that had the battle cruisers in. And then I set the ships to loose formation so they could speed up. But that definitely did not do them well. Confirms the theory that it's the light... No, it's the, the loose formation. So the loose spread. That is causing the issue for the AI. When you do that, they go, I don't know what to do with these ships anymore. How sneaky are these torps? Minus 43. Because it looks like Centurion's about to run right into two of them. Oh, she, she now detected them. That's impossible to avoid both. Torpedo hit. Anti-flood. Uh, two. Anti-torp two. She's done for. She cannot deal with that flooding so fast. There. Seriously, this is a factor of 20 times the damage. If I build some sort of overpowered ship, sure. But now? Now it's just lacking credibility. I'm not even... See, this thing has tried to shoot. Almost 900 times. And yes, it didn't do that much damage while trying, but still. That was an 18-inch hit. <laughs> High explosive. Not that much left of that destroyer. Also, the destroyer has maximum bulkheads. What is the AI up to? What I would really like to see from the devs before they launch the campaign. I know that a lot of people are waiting for that. But before they launch the campaign, I want to see them fix the weird stuff that the AI does. I want to see that they get the AI right. Because if the AI does this in, let's say, custom battles, then... It's probably going to translate one-to-one -to, -one to the campaign. Which wouldn't be good for the campaign. And it wouldn't be good for the game. Because people are just... Well... You might get bored with the game considering how easy it is to kill these AI units. Here, 12,000 damage, 526 taken. No overpowered build. It's just that the British either pick the wrong target... Or something else is going on, but they were not accurate and they just didn't do the damage. Anyway, I hope that you guys um, have different encounters with the AI and that they're more capable in yours. Let me know down in the comment section how that goes. If you want to play the game, link down below in the description. I'm not affiliated with the devs, but I do enjoy their game. Please note it is in an alpha state. It has not been, uh, well, enriched with the campaign. It's not here yet, but it will come hopefully sometime later this year. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more action.